What's up guys? So today we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a technique that I've been using recently for animating borders, whether it's doing kind of loading animations like this or button animations on hover like this, really anytime that you wanna do kind of something interesting on the border of an element, it's generally pretty hard to do or impossible maybe to do with normal borders. So we have a little bit of a hack to get around that. We can get results that look like this. We'll go ahead and look even at something with maybe conic gradients that look like this, or even repeating conic gradients that look something like this. Kind of your imagination is uh, the limit on this one. So without wasting any more of your time, let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. Cool, so before we actually spend any time diving into the actual code, I just kind of want to talk at a high level about the idea of what we're actually going to be doing here. The trick to this is we aren't actually using real borders. Um, and what I mean by that is, as opposed to using an actual border, we're just kind of using some kind of element and utilizing overflows, or specifically overflow hidden, while doing some sort of animation to an element that's coming in and out of that overflow hidden kind of zone to create this effect of something looking like it's like animating, doing something like, you know, this little hover thing where it looks like there's some kind of line coming in. What's actually happening in a case like that, or better yet, that kind of spinny case that I was showing earlier, is we have some setup like this. So we can imagine that this is some kind of element that we have on our screen, which we wanna have a border around it. What we're actually gonna do is we're going to have, oops, wrong one, sorry, two elements that kind of look like this. This might just be two divs that are kind of one inside of the other. And this outside one is going to be the housing for our kind of element, so, or not our element, sorry, our border. So this outer kind of white line here is going to be the housing for our border, which is animating. And then this inner box is going to be the actual kind of content of our item, whether it's kind of a button or a card or whatever it may be. So what we're actually gonna do is you can imagine that you have these two elements like this, maybe this outer one here with the white has whatever this is, say five pixels of padding. And then this inner one has some kind of content in it or some kind of width and height set. And what we're gonna do is in between these two items, we're gonna sandwich another item that looks something like this. So in this case, we're talking about a gradient. And I'm gonna go ahead and take that down to the size of the white one. Uh, maybe just a little bit bigger so you can still see the difference. Um, and while we're sandwiched inside of this, this white item, we can imagine, uh, that was sounding kind of funny. So while we're sandwiched inside of this white border here, we can imagine that if we kind of go ahead and start to rotate this, uh, this is something we could do, but at this scale, it might look a little bit ridiculous, right? Because it would be kind of going in and out of this white section. You have these kind of big edges that are coming out of the side, and this isn't particularly useful. But we can, what we can do instead, I'm just going to go back a couple, is imagine what if we kind of scaled this up, right? So now we're just looking kind of relative to this gradient with this white border here. And if we were to go ahead and rotate something like this, it's not actually going to overlap kind of those corners, right? Obviously this is still spilling way out into the middle of nowhere and it just looks ridiculous, but it gets us a little bit closer. You can imagine that if you're kind of just focusing on this white area, that it would really look like we had some kind of spinning border here, right? Um, and we can actually see that. I'll just do that in Figma here, which is the, the software that I'm using. If I go ahead and add a mask like this, now it actually looks like we have this kind of gradient border, right? And if I go ahead and spin this guy out here, you'll see that if you're just looking at that border, it actually looks like we have some kind of spinning border now, um, which is exactly what we're looking for. You could do any kind of element like this. In fact, you can even do, I have another example over here, something like that button that I had. So with that button, you have your button like this, and then whenever you hover it, you have what looks like, you know, kind of the edges coming in from either side. What's actually happening in an example like that is you have kind of a button in the middle like this, and then your, some kind of pseudo element generally, in this case I have this kind of blue box, which is the size of the entire kind of bordered box thing here. And I'm just translating it from something like up here all the way down to fit back in the kind of containing div. And we're doing that from both sides. So I have one kind of element that's up to the left and then it kind of animates in and then you're doing the same thing from down into the right. So you have another element down here that's animating in and both of those things kind of in tandem with each other gives you an effect that looks something like this button where it looks like you have all of the borders kind of coming in on each other. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the, the primary idea that we've got here. This isn't actually a border animation. This is kind of just a little bit of a hack to make it look like you have a border animation. We're just creating an extra element like this, scaling it up, and then doing some kind of animation on that extra element to give us the effect or the kind of illusion that we have a, uh, a border which is animating. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's pretty much the main idea. We can go ahead and jump into the code now. All right, cool. So I am over here in my HTML now, and I already have a little bit of a uh, kind of file template in, in here, nothing too crazy. So just 
kind of a boilerplate HTML file. In my HTML itself, we'll actually look at that first. I just have a couple of divs. So we have this card outer div. This card outer div is essentially that, uh, here, let's use this as reference while we do this. Let's see, go ahead and hide the, hide the UI here. Um, so the card outer is going to be that kind of border, like the white border, not this guy, but like the actual kind of border for the overflow. The spinning border div is going to be, as you might think, kind of this div that is going to be animating on the outside. And then this card inner guy is going to be for all of the content that we have inside of this box here. Inside of that, I just have an SVG, which is kind of just this little half circle-y type thing, which I just have spinning. So if we go ahead and look at the CSS that we already have, have a little bit of a basic reset, just removing any kind of margin padding, border box, stuff like that. Don't actually have any fonts in this, so don't really need that, but whatever. For our body, I'm just setting it to the size of the screen, putting everything in the middle, and then giving it this pretty much completely black background. For our SVG itself, I'm giving it some font size, some color, and then I have a basic keyframes animation for spinning this thing around. So as you can see here, we're kind of spinning this guy in a circle. It's just one second, it's linear and infinite, just going from zero degrees to 360 degrees. That said, we should probably remember this piece because we're gonna use the same animation for spinning our border. So spinning this, whatever, this kind of uh, colorful guy on the edges, we're gonna do the exact same thing. But yeah, so, so all of that said, let's go ahead and actually start styling up some of our divs here. To start, uh, to start with rather, we're gonna go ahead and style this card outer guy right here. I'm just gonna come under our keyframe spin animation here and add a selector for card outer. And this guy, we, I kind of want to, uh, we're going to add some background color to this just so we can actually see it. But when you're actually doing this, you don't actually need to do the step. So just for visibility, we're going to go ahead and say white. If I save that, we'll see we now have a little bit of a white box there. Under that, we'll go ahead and just give this some padding. So the padding is essentially going to be how big you actually want the border to be. So if we just did one pixel of padding, obviously you don't have anything in front of this yet, um, but you'll have a tiny border. I want a really big one. So we'll go ahead and do something like 12 pixels. We're gonna give this an overflow of hidden. We can see this with and without this in a, a moment to kind of see the difference here. Um, but for the time being, we'll add overflow hidden onto this. And then we just need to give this a Z index so we can kind of stack things the way we want them. So in this case, we'll just do position of relative. That way we can do something like Z index of one. And this should be pretty much all the styling that we need for this guy. Now what I wanna go ahead and do is style the inner div. So the inner div is going to be this guy, which is gonna be where all the content goes. So under that, I'm gonna go ahead and say card inner. And for card inner, we're gonna just give this some width and some height. So we'll say width of say, yeah, maybe 300 pixels. We'll do a height of 350 pixels. We'll give this a background color that's pretty close to the background. Uh, I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter. So let's do something like, say, I don't know, maybe like 14, 14, 14, something like that. Should start to see something pop up here. Yep, there we go. So now we actually have a card here and you'll see that this kind of actually looks like a border now. Um, below the background, we'll add some, uh, or we'll center everything rather. So we'll just say uh, display uh, flex. We'll do align items center and we'll do justify, oops, justify content. Center. This should take our little spinny dude, put him in the middle of the screen. And then for this as well, I'm gonna give this some kind of Z index. So we'll say as well, position, not inherit, so position relative, and then a Z index of uh, three. So I'm just really doing this to demonstrate that we have kind of three layers. We have this bottom layer here, a top layer, and then we're gonna have that middle kind of spinny layer, which is gonna sit in between all these guys. And we can go ahead and start adding that. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn this overflow hidden off just for a second. We'll come back to that so we can see how all of this works as we go. And we'll go ahead and start styling this border. Coming down, uh, remember we do already have this div here for our spinning border. We'll go ahead and select that. We'll say spinning, oops, spinning border. And inside of that, I'm just gonna copy paste this gradient that I already have because I know that it looks nice, but you can go ahead and copy the same colors if you want. It's just linear gradient with a couple of colors in here. Do this however you want for yours, whatever you think looks nice. And uh, if I go ahead and save that, we shouldn't actually see anything because this doesn't have any width or anything to it yet. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna absolutely position this. So because we have relative positioning on our card outer, which our card outer is going to be the nearest parent to our spinning border, we can go ahead and give this a position 
of absolute, and that absolute positioning will be relative to this kind of white box here. Under that, we'll go ahead and say a Z index of two, something like that. And we'll give this uh, an inset of zero. So if you've never used this before, maybe you're used to doing something like top zero, bottom zero, et cetera, et cetera, setting the width height to the full size of your entire box here. A shorthand for that is just to say inset of zero. And now we should have what looks like this kind of static border here. Um, and now that we have this, the first thing that I wanna actually do is go ahead and add this same animation that we have for our, uh, our SVG up here, the spin animation, to our box. So we can actually start to see what's happening here, leaving on that the kind of white background on the, uh, the border that we have. So if I go ahead and save that, ooh, that's way too fast. Let's say five seconds. Now we see this kind of ridiculous looking thing like I was demonstrating in our kind of Figma project over here. We have something that looks like, you know, just a box windmilling in between two other boxes looks kind of ridiculous, right? The first thing that we might wanna do is kind of to break this into the two problems that we have is to add that overflow hidden back in so that these corners are actually getting chopped off when they're outside of the range of this white box on the outside. So we'll go ahead and do that. Come back up to our card outer and I'll uncomment that guy. And now we are 95% of the way there. So now we have what looks like a border with just like this weird little animating box behind it. Um, removing that white background from the card outer will make it look a little bit more like just a border. Um, but yeah, so you'll, you'll get something that kind of looks like this. To actually wrap this up, the only last thing that we need to do is to make sure that this is actually big enough to not kind of get cut off whenever it's spinning like this, right? So all that we need to do, we could either, you know, set the width to 200% or something like that. What I like to do is just say scale of say 1.75, I think is what I found was pretty good for this. You'll actually want to play with this a little bit, like maybe something like 1.15, you'll still kind of get the issue. So kind of just slowly get bigger and bigger until you stop getting any corners. So you still get a little bit of a corner popping in there. Say something like 1.65 maybe be, would be uh, about right. Um, so yeah, this is, this is literally all that there is to this. You can play with different types of backgrounds. So I have a couple other cool ones here that I think I showed earlier. For instance, you could do something like a uh, repeating conic gradient. So something like this, if you've never seen this before, or even a conic gradient, uh, I will go ahead and add some links in the description for actually how these work. But you can do something like this and get a pretty cool effect of something like this. It's almost like a, I don't know what the right word would be for it, but like a Tron-y type thing, like Tron, like a get like these little racery type things kind of going around the sides, which look really cool. You can even just use a normal conic gradient as opposed to a repeating one and get something that looks like this. Let's see. Yeah, so there we go. So now we're just going from completely black to an actual kind of whitish color. Um, sorry, not even completely black, completely transparent to this kind of whitish color, which gives you what's kind of like a loading effect. You could have this just go in kind of one direction. So you would just have like a line kind of going around the outside if you wanted to build a loader or something like that and get a pretty cool effect. Um, like I had mentioned earlier, you can use the same kind of technique for something like this, which we can take a look at as well. What we'll see here is I'm doing a similar effect with a button as well as a span inside of that button and then using pseudo elements as these kind of items. So let's see, the easiest way to show what's actually happening here is probably to remove overflow hidden. So we'll go ahead and comment this guy out and rerun this server for this button. So there we go. So now we just see we have two kind of boxes like this, which are positioned out to the left and right of our item like this. And then they just kind of zoom in towards the center like this, which when you don't have that weird overflowy thing looks something like this. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one, guys. This is a pretty cool trick. I've been using this relatively often in my projects as of late. Anytime I wanna add some kind of spice to a little card or a loader or something like that, there's a really cool, interesting way to do it that I haven't seen a lot of people play with before. So take this, add it to your portfolios, add it to your projects, or just keep it in your tool belt for later, whatever you wanna do. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If it was, I would super appreciate a like and a subscribe, hit the bell if you wanna see more videos like this. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.